Good evening, everyone. It is an honor to be here today as we are gathered before God. Allergies are bad this time of year. To unite Drew and Mallory in holy matrimony. As followers of Jesus Christ, they believe God, as is stated in Genesis 2, created marriage for a man and woman to become one flesh. Drew and Mallory, as you take these vows, today give careful thought and prayer, recognizing as you make them, you're making an exclusive commitment to one another for as long as you both shall live. Your love for one another should not waver through difficult circumstances, and it should endure until death do you part. Blessed is the one that comes to unite at the marriage altar with the approval and blessing from your friends and your family. Who gives this beautiful bride away? Everyone may now be seated. Would you please join me in a moment of prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for uh, this joyous day, Lord, and uh, God, just um, for watching out over Drew and Mallory, Lord, and, and bringing them together, and uh, God, I pray that you would bless this evening as they come before you and as they commit their lives together. I pray that you would bless uh, their marriage. I pray that you would bless this evening, and Heavenly Father, we ask all of this in your holy and precious name. Amen. We are very excited that you could all join us for this evening as this is a special moment for Drew and Mallory to join their lives together. For those of you who do not know, my name is Brandon uh, and I am the older brother of the bride. And uh, out of all the long list of the ministers that they interviewed, I was seemed to be the most qualified. Um, I, I, my celebrity status may have helped me as well after doing all these Verizon commercials the past two years. <laughs> So, it's, I'm very glad to be here today. Uh, Mallory and I were closest in age among our siblings, which means at times we were very close, which was great, um, but it also means that we fought a lot as well. Uh, about a year ago, uh, my wife and I were still living in Southern California, and uh, Mallory uh, had called Ashley telling her about Drew and that they were officially dating, and, and just through the things that Mallory had said about Drew, he seemed like a very good guy. Um, Oddly enough, though, a few weeks into dating, uh, he said that he got a job in Atlanta for work so that he would be moving. So if you're a fan of the Friends TV show, uh, which Mallory and Drew are, uh, you'll recall a, an episode where Chandler tells Janice he is moving to Yemen because he wants to break up with her. So I had to at least think of the concept that it, I was just wondering if Atlanta happened to be Yemen for Drew. <laughs> Only time would tell. But he kept flying back to visit Mallory here in Wichita, and she began to fly to Atlanta to visit him, and we knew that this uh, was for real. So Mallory and Drew have been doing long distance over the past year, and if you follow them on social media like I do, you may be confused sometimes, because they were together so often. You may have thought, did Drew actually move to Atlanta, or did Mallory move there with him? And um, actually, last week, I just counted up all the money that they spent on airfare on going back and forth to, with each other, and I learned that they actually would have saved a little bit of money if they had bought a small private jet. <laughs> um, but now, I, I guess it was all worth it. It all worked out. In all seriousness, Drew has proven himself to be a very good guy, and we are very excited to have him in the family. And for better or for worse, Drew... You are now in the Gologly family. Now when we look at scripture, we see in Ephesians 5 on the concept of marriage. And when Paul lays out, we see the commands that he gives for both the wife and the husband. Throughout this passage, Paul reveals how a marriage between a man and woman is used to illustrate the relationship between Jesus Christ and his bride, which is the church. The commands for the wife. The wife is commanded to submit to and respect her husband, just as the church submits to Christ. 
The idea of submission and submitting to someone in our culture is not the most popular concept, right? We like to be our own boss. We like to be independent and, and do things our own way. And that's ultimately why businesses like Uber exist, right? We get to work when we want to, and we have no one telling us what to do. But scripture reveals the submission that submission is good. Mallory, in obedience to the Lord, submit to Drew. Show him honor and respect. Even when he does foolish things like cheering for the K-State Wildcats, show honor and comfort him when they lose. When he frustrates you, never respond in a disrespect, disrespectful or rude manner. Mallory, pray for Drew. Pray for him to fall more in love with Christ as the years go on. Pray that he would daily consume the word of God. Pray that he will lead you and your future children in a Christ-like way. Now the commands for the husband that Paul lays out in Ephesians 5. The husband is commanded to love his wife as himself, just as Christ loved the church. Loving like Christ is no small task. Ephesians says Jesus gave himself up, provides, and cares for his bride. Jesus so loved us that he died for us. When he was on earth, he continuously served people. In fact, no one has ever committed an act of love as great as Jesus did for his bride. This act was a dying and brutal death on the cross for all of our sins. Drew, you are to imitate Jesus' love. Do this with reverence. Love and be patient with Mallory as Jesus is with us. When she's hard to love, respond with gentleness and kindness. Pray for Mallory. Pray that her love for God would increase in multitudes. Pray that her love for God's word may never cease. Pray for both of you and your marriage and that you would pursue God's kingdom together. When studying uh, the, chap uh, the passage of Ephesians 5, it reminded me of just an illustration of the way that Christ uh, loves his people. Um, when, I, when I was growing up in our family, we would make a trip to Branson and Arkansas once a year for a family reunion. And... Many of you have maybe made that trip from here to Branson, and as you know, um, anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes um, from Branson, you start to see all these billboards and signs advertising the uh, amusement parks and all the shows, and we used to play the ABC game, and you know, it would just caught and make you get excited for your destination. So never once, I thought about this, never once did I ever see an RV or a camper set out right next to a billboard and set up camp for the week. And you say, yeah, Brandon, that would be very odd, right? Right along the highway, and it would be unsafe. It would be odd because it's simple that when we see a billboard, it's, it's not our actual destination, but it's to advertise to something that, we, that is ahead. It's to excite us for, your, for our final destination to where we are traveling to. In the same way, earthly marriages here on earth and Mallory and Drew's marriage here today is to ultimately advertise and it's the illustration of Jesus' relationship with his bride. Every earthly marriage will come to an end, but the marriage between Christ and his bride exists for all of eternity. For those of us who have been saved, are, follow him and are obedient to him, we will dwell with him forever where there is unending joy, peace, and glory. But... When we forget that marriage reflects the relationship between Jesus and his bride, then we will be like those hypothetical people who are stopped in front of the billboards and never actually make it to Branson. We have lost sight of the end, uh, of the end goal. This will happen when we are more consumed about our own marriage more than our relationship with God. And this is called idolatry. We may think marriage will complete and satisfy us, but it doesn't. The symptoms of losing sight of, this, of the purpose of marriage and in divorce and affairs and cheating and bitterness and lack of intimate relationship. And all of these are disobedience to what Jesus commands in Ephesians 5. Only a true relationship with God can satisfy us, not marriage or any other earthly pleasure. When we remember this truth, the potential for a joyful and pleasurable marriage that God intended for will be much more likely. As scripture teaches, as the greatest commandment, Drew and Mallory, you ought to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This command is both for the married and unmarried. Now as a married couple, you should encourage one another in worshiping God together, and through your marriage, display to the world the relationship between Christ and his bride. 
Now at this moment, the bride and groom will like uh, will take some time to take communion together. Love is not proud. Love does not boast. Love, after all, matters the most. Love does not run. Love does not hide. Love does not keep locked inside. Love is the river that flows through Love never fails you Love will sustain Love will provide Love will not see of time love will protect love always holds love will not cease at the end of time love is the river that flows through love never fails Love is right here Love is alive Love is the way, the truth, the life You can still touch your hands <laughs> Yeah Alright, now at this moment uh, we will begin with the vows Drew and Mallory, as you share your vows with one another, remember that you are making a promise and a declaration before God to love, serve, and be faithful to one another until death do you part. Drew, you will go first. Mallory Ann Gologli, I love you with all my heart, and I know that this love is from God. On this day, I give myself to you, both now and forever. You are my best friend and my better half. Proverbs 12.4 says, A wife of noble character is her husband's crown. You are my crown and the one thing I'm most proud of. I vow to love you and to give myself up for you, just as Christ did for his church. I promise to always strive to put you before myself, even when KU beats K-State, which Brandon hit to seems to happen a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. I vow to love you forever and always, in the sunshine and in the rain, in joy and in sorrow, in Kansas and in Georgia. I vow to be your biggest fan and to help you accomplish your dreams. I can't wait to do life with you, to go on adventures with you, and to have you forever sitting beside me in the middle seat of my truck singing every word to every country song. No matter where this life takes us, I will always remember and cherish this day when the most fun and beautiful girl in the world chose me. When I met you nine years ago, I never would have dreamed.